This is Twit. I'm dying to hear about the LG V50. Oh. Yes. Because as everyone knows, the LG V50 has got the dual screen case. Mm-hmm. Uh, so give me the goods. Give me the dish. So, Look at that. Um, Spill it. To, to, uh, the, to juxtapose how Jason started off his Note 10 review here, sometimes you're holding a phone that nobody is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I present to you the LG V50. Wow, the headline. Yeah. Oh. I think it's cute. It, it looks so like I a mean, little when it's, computer. When it's, open, when it's open like that, it looks like a paperback book. It's. I mean, That's it's enormous. A dual, it's. It, it's a. It's a. Um, it's a big phone. The V series are the bigger phones. It's. It's not quite as big as a Note 10, but you add a case to it, and then the case has this wallet style cover. So. Here's the thing that's going to upset a lot of people, uh, especially people who were never interested in, in oh buying gosh. an LG phone in the Android enthusiast community. This phone okay. right here is yes. the South Korean LG V50. Uh, I do have the oh. uh, Sprint 5G LG V50, and this case communicates over a series of pogo pins on the bottom of the phone which United States carriers are not going to support. Oh, oh wow. So, wow. WTF, mate? Sad trombone. Sad, sad trombone, LG. Victor. LG wow. has always I mean it would not be this is this is one of my all-time favorite manufacturers. This line of phones is one of my all-time phones, but it's not an LG launch unless there is some weird regional separation on some features going to some phones and some features going to other phones. And we've been dealing with this since the G5. Can we blame America and, for and, this too? <laughs> and probably, but not only that weird distinction, but now we're on the losing side of that weird distinction because that's and, the and cool now, functionality. And now uh. we, we, we're the ones this, this round that are going to get the shorter end of the stick. So the, the V50 uh-huh. is is probably going to be my personal favorite phone of the year. It's a phone that's almost perfectly designed in a lab for me. I listen to high quality audio files. I I make content on my phones, like editing videos and rendering videos and managing social media. I am disgustingly excited about desktop modes and using my phone to replace my laptop. And you could not make a better phone for me than the South Korean variant of the LG V50, Uh, especially even down to the headphone jack is still, it's an audiophile grade piece of hardware on a premium device. And I don't see, I I, I don't, I I have a hard time with excuses on premium devices that we shouldn't get top class premium features like good audio. So um, the, the, this uh, the screen attachment is a, it functions a lot like uh, an Axon M, if you can recall ZTE's experiment with a folding type device. But this but really it looks does way re- better. Well, it does and it doesn't. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So, so the 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 case, this functionality. Let me get it fired back up here. Um, doesn't have a one app mode because there's just too big of a seam running between the 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 case and the second screen. So while there was a, a divide on the Axon M, you could make one app go full screen for the limited number of apps that the Axon M supported for that f- functionality. Here, you're not going to get that. And that's I mean, it, it's to be expected because you can't make two screens line up seamlessly when you're on a hinge and you're trying to make them, you know, sort of pop side by side. This is really about running two apps at the same time or giving you expanded screen real estate for things like gaming, where you can turn that, you know, one of your screens into a controller interface. So you can go dual stick analog controller. You can go with a, a driving wheel. That, that kind of functionality is what this is all about. Mul- uh, multitasking, two apps at the same time, and then giving you uh, a keyboard layout. Like you can turn this into your keyboard so you have like that old HTC style slider effect. Your top right, screen is right. completely alone and your thumbs can travel on a full, you know, full screen keyboard and it doesn't take So cool. cool. So it, it's, it's supremely disappointing if you're a fan of this brand. 
Um, and, and especially if you like something that's a little bit different than what other companies are doing, like they're not going to play the same folding phone game as Huawei and Samsung just yet. We can be pretty confident they'll probably join next year or the year after with some type of bendy phone folding solution. But as someone who's been very skeptical of the folding phone as a solution, I really like the idea of accessories that expand Android. And this is a good idea. This is something I would really love to have North Americans playing with, but they're not really going to get the chance to is I don't even know if there will be a V50 unlocked model coming to North America that might have this functionality on it. I, I, I wonder what the what the th thought process there is like did Sprint or whatever partner that they're working with say, hey, listen, there's no market for this. Like, yeah, yeah it's cool, question. but leave it, you know, like, like, that, or is it on the, uh, or is it on the LG side to say, Hey, you know, Koreans, you get this special stuff because we're a hometown brand and there you go. You know, like so I, I, I wonder the inside, what the decision making. The inside baseball I got, and this was a hard conversation that I had with, um, one of the international PR reps with LG when the G6 came out because the Korean G6 got the quad DAC. The United States G6 got wireless charging and the European G6 got neither. Um, the, the, they are making phones for regional contracts and I think they give too much leverage because we know they're not investing in, in as much uh, advertising. They're not putting pop-up kiosks. You know, there are Samsung experiences that you can go to in malls and see this stuff. And we know that mm -hmm. Samsung probably spends more on advertising every year than all of LG's phone department in total. So they, I think they leverage those relationships really heavy. And if one of their partners says, hey, you know what? We just don't want to have to stock that stuff and we don't think it's going to sell, then they just don't even try. You know, I think they yeah. roll over too easily. And it's a bummer because I think if you were going to look at a phone like the V50, which I believe on Sprint is a $1,000 phone, 999 5G. There is no 4G variant of the V50. That would be a good value add-on. You go into Sprint and then you also get like, I, I don't even know what the case would retail for, but a whole second screen, you could probably make a play for $100, turn it into an $1,100 dual screen 5G phone. That would be a huge value add with every customer that you had on that carrier. So I don't understand from the carrier perspective, not having an accessory that would improve their retail standing. Like they would make money on that. But uh, I guess they were crunching numbers and decided it wasn't worth the uh, the floor space or the warehouse space to stock it. Short sighted, short sighted, my friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I've been uh, spending the last two weeks with V50 and uh, Sprint's 5G strategy is a lot different than Verizon's, and uh, it it seems like there are some some good ideas at play. And but but I, I would still fall back on the same thing that you experienced with the Note, Jason. If you had a V40. There is functionally very little that's different going from between these two phones. They're exceedingly similar experiences in all the best ways and in some of the more frustrating ways. And uh, it, it, as much as I like this company and I like this brand, it's hard trying to give them that push or, or those recommendations when sometimes it seems like the company doesn't always have faith in their own products. They're not putting out yeah. advertisements. They're not making these commercials. They'll, they'll launch the phone, show a couple ads, rely on Sprint or Verizon, and then back off after a week. And then the phone just seems to disappear from Bye. the general conversation. Yep. And it's a, it's a bummer. Juan's nailed it. Dwindles yeah, away. For well, sure. I mean, but th sadly, that's business. I mean, because like they fit, they've run the numbers where they only need to sell a certain amount to make it profitable. So, why, you know, I, I mean, it's, it's a sad reality, but it somewhat makes sense. Um, but at I least mean, make it available it for somebody who's an enthusiast who's into it who wants it. Yeah, totally. And and, and to me, yeah. that that would be that would be hopefully after we go through, I, you know, the fingers crossed. And and I have no data. This I have no information on. But hopefully, the exclusivity on any kind of carrier partnership isn't for the life of the phone. And if that's the case, then hopefully we would see some type of unlocked model going to Amazon or B and H or some other re, a retailer. That that would be the way that you could bring this feature and, and 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 this accessory to other people. But again, I have no information on that. If you were holding off on a phone purchase and you really wanted this accessory, I would likely go with it's probably not going to happen 
from what we saw with the G5 and the different friends that LG had, those modular accessories. Oh, the friends. Yeah, the I, friends. it's it's I, that that's where LG's past as a as a company. That's the only data point I have to draw from. Makes me feel like I would be inclined to say probably not. Yeah. If you were looking at dual screen, if you just wanted, uh, you know. A, a top of the line premium, amazing multimedia device. The V50 is a beast. It, it really is a monster phone where you've got cinema shot, where you've got 4K, 60 frames per second, 80 megabit da data rate with image stabilization at 60 frames per second, triple camera layout, manual controls, focus peaking. You can shoot 240 frames per second slow motion video from the wide angle camera and control all of the features of that video, plug microphones into it and have granular control over the audio. And then when you're done and you wanna relax, plug in headphones and have head and shoulders far away from the rest of the competition, the absolute best headphone audio experience that's ever been produced on maybe any portable gadget under a thousand dollars you know so it there there's a lot to like about v50 it's just the company itself doesn't seem like they want to talk about the phone much which is kind of a bummer